So, Linda, we've talked about client experience in, in a macro view, but let me ask you this. What, what makes for a great client experience? Well, I think, Phil, that the very first thing is intention. You know, so many practitioners are hired and they're sort of given their desk and they're given their phone, and what turns out to be the client experience is somewhat random. It, it, it's not well thought out. So it's very, very important to have a, a vision of what it is that you want your clients to experience. Some years ago, I worked with an advisor who had three sons, and he'd taken them to the opening of the Harry Potter Park in, in Orlando. <laughs> and one of the boys was hearing impaired and had a hearing aid about the size of a dime. They went into one of those big, dark Space Mountain kind of rides, you know, an enormous building, and, and they came out and the hearing aid was gone. Well, the dad, thinking it's gone forever, not covered by insurance, by the way, and about $3,000, $3,500, but he shuffled his boys off to the lost and found, basically to give them a good example in, in good stewardship, and uh, thought he'd never see it again. Well, the day after they got home, someone from Universal called and said, we have your hearing aid, just tell us how to get it to you. And he was astonished. He said, how did you do this? And they said, when the park closed, we got all of the employees, we turned on all of the lights, and we found it. Now, where does this come from in terms of client experience? The overall organization, a very large one of course, has a commitment to a superior guest experience. They don't even say client or customer, of course they say guest. And in the lost and found department, they translated that to every lost item we can possibly locate will be found within 48 hours. And then they lived up to that. But it starts with vision and intention. Don't you think? Hmm. I do. So, Bill, let me ask you this. From a practice management standpoint, what role can technology play in helping to deliver on that very intentional client experience? Uh, Phil, it's a great question. Of course, tech actually allows us to have a different new orientation. It's one that can meet today's age of consumerism, where people are looking for the opportunity to use their products and services in a very personalized way, the way they want to, as opposed to the organization or the firm having to only have one way to do that. One way to think about this is like apps on your phone. If you think about it, everybody's home screen looks a lot different, right? And it's because we are choosing the products and services that we want to use from the platform. Advisors can think about their product and service list as the platform or those apps that the client gets to choose. It's a different way of thinking about how to use technology to be able to sort of deconstruct what it is that you do and let the client choose the experience that they want to have. All right, so Bill, now let me, let me ask you a question. Um, one of my all-time favorite books uh, was entitled The Carolina Way. It was written by the late Dean Smith when he was a head basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. And in his book, he opined that as a leader, as a coach, uh, he focused his teams on playing basketball the Carolina way, uh, not deviating from one opponent to the next. Now, it sounds like here you're espousing a philosophy that uh, the, the advisor should be adaptive to every individual client scenario. How can you ever get any efficiency? How can you ever get any scale if you're going to change your, your philosophy or your workflows for every individual client? That's such a great question because uh, traditionally people have always thought, I want to deliver a great client experience. The challenge with that is the orientation that advisors have to the marketplace is here's, here's what I do and here's how I do it. And this is how much I charge for it. Now, who can I find to sell it to? Right. And so what we're trying to do is to help advisors understand that technology now can flip that around. What is it that my client is trying to get done? What is it that they're trying to achieve in terms of gains? Mm -hmm. What things are they trying to avoid? And how can I build a product or service that meets that? You know, it's a lot easier to make things that people want than to make people want things. <laughs> so our approach here is to recognize that you can create the standardization, right? For, uh, because you control what is it that you're going to deconstruct? What is that service process? You can standardize how you deliver those services. That's the whole point of creating the workflows. So you gain the efficiencies, but you also allow yourself to be able to let the client choose because the most important thing to do is to make sure that when a client selects a product or service, you know what the cost is to deliver that 
and you've got a profit margin placed on top of that. So you're, you're never concerned about, am I going to deliver something uh, that I'm not really getting appropriately compensated for? Mm -hmm. So that's the power of the technology and what it can do. So the Dean Smith analogy is exactly still correct, right? We do codify everything that we do. We just happen to put it into the technology so the technology automates the activity for us. Does that make sense? It does. Good. Well, let me see if I understand really what, what we're looking at here. So if, for example, you're my client and I know that your daughter is going to graduate from college in a certain year, I can put it into my CRM and I never have to think about it again until maybe May of that year when it generally pops up automatically and says, send Mr. Trigler a congratulatory a note or a card on his daughter's graduation. So what you end up with is something that from our point of view, from the advisory point of view, is sort of automated mechanical routine, but from the client point of view is totally customized. It creates a really nice personalization. And this is where innovation um, and the ability to think differently about how we run our businesses today is so impactful. So let's take that example that you just gave. I'm reminded that the daughter is going to go to college. <clears throat> now, what can we do from a product and service standpoint that could help us grow our practice? So what does someone who's going to college really need from a financial services perspective? Well, let's see, they need a debit card, right? Mom and dad's going to give them some money. They're going to have to have a budget. So they need a, a budgeting process, right? Um, they actually need to think about how are they going to do the, uh, the financing for the school? And they need someone outside of mom and dad to have a conversation about how important it is not to run up your credit, um, to manage your finances really well, to think a little longer term than just next semester about um, the choices that they're making in school and, and how they're applying themselves in the classroom, right? Mm-hmm. So if you think about that, uh, that could be an actual service that you can sell to that student. you got a new revenue stream. Now, some advisors might say, well, no, but no, no college kid is going to pay any kind of money for that. Let's think about what it costs us. So if we use technology, and I'm going to use the example of e-money, e-money can provide every one of those services, with the exception of the time that you spend with the child, right? Having the conversation. Let's say you spend an hour with them. So now the cost is just your cost of time. You mark it up appropriately. And so how much could that cost? Well, let's just say $700. Who do you think is going to pay $700 to have all of those services available for their child while they're in school for four years? It's going to be mom and dad, right? So it's a powerful way to think about the service and the service set is specific to solving and helping a child in college. Mom and dad like it because you've got somebody else involved helping them manage their, right, manage the relationship. And and also you can use that as an opportunity to educate the kids about wealth and wealth management. This is gonna fold in later to Klein is the family, Mm -hmm. but it's a really interesting concept about how tech can help us actually make a complete paradigm shift Right. about what the client experience really is. And the early adopters are going to be the ones that create significant differentiation and capture lots of market share. So Bill, to, to put it real simply, should there be one or many different client experiences? Uh, great question. <clears throat> when you think about the what I call the old way, you know, the, uh, the way that we used to deliver client experiences, it was really never one way because we segmented our clients by A's, B's, and C's. Sure. And by default, they all got a different client experience from, from right. that perspective. But now, because we can use technology to help us identify uh, things that we're going to work on in the CWS program in just a little bit, communication plans and touch points, combined with the selection of services, that's now how we can define what the total client experience really is. So from that perspective, you get to let the client choose the direction and the experience that they want to have. 